Hello again. Welcome to a new class, a new syntax class. And uh, last time that we saw each other, it, you were asked to do uh, textbook page 131, exercise 8, uh, phrase structure rules. And you were supposed to write, rewrite rules for the trees you have drawn, the 15 trees you've drawn. Those were the tasks to do. Let's continue today with the manual, page 10. And on page 10, it says, consider the following two sets of phrase structure rules for English and answer questions A to D. So you have two sets, set one and set two. In set one, it says, a sub the sentence is noun phrase plus verb phrase. Can you see that? All right. So if we go down, scroll down, we will see A. A says, draw the phrase structure tree that is defined by applying the phrase structure rules one to eight in set one. One to eight in set one. So let me do it for you. Number one says, sentence is noun phrase plus verb phrase. And I'm supposed to draw a tree diagram. So how do you do that? Sentence is noun phrase plus verb phrase. Clear? And then you have noun phrase. Noun phrase is determiner, and in parentheses it says article plus noun, plus prepositional phrase. This happens in the subject. And the prepositional phrase, what is it? Is a preposition plus a noun phrase. So we're supposed to do this then. And then the noun phrase is noun, yeah, sorry, determiner plus adjective plus noun. Now the verb phrase, number five, verb phrase. Verb phrase is auxiliary plus verb plus noun phrase. And what is the noun phrase? The noun phrase, according to number six, is determiner, article, noun, and prepositional phrase. Number seven says that prepositional phrase is preposition plus noun phrase. And number eight says that noun phrase is determiner, article, plus noun okay this is a now let's read what b says b says give an appropriate sentence for the tree you have drawn in question a so i'm supposed to write a sentence here that matches my tree what would that sentence be okay so here is the part where you need to use your imagination, okay? The dog uh, on the, so the soft couch was eating the hamburger hamburger uh, what else prepositional phrase um, in his pajamas Assuming that the dog wears pajama, pajamas, okay? So the dog, determiner noun, the dog, on the soft couch was eating a hamburger in his pajamas. This is B. Then C says, draw the phrase structure tree that is defined by applying the phrase structure rules one to six in set two. I'm not going to do that. You will do that on your own. And then you will show me. 
And then D says, give an appropriate sentence for the tree you have drawn in question C, similar to what I did. Okay, so this is the example, set one is the example, set two is for you to do it on your own. Let's continue with the manual, today's lesson. It says three diagrams of imperative sentences. Can you see that in, the, in your manual? Three diagrams of imperative sentences. Number one, combine the cracker crumbs in a bowl. This was taken from a recipe book, a cook cooker book. Top with crumb mixture, microwave and covered on a high for 12 minutes. That microwave favorite to us, flattened slightly with a glass dip dipped in sugar. What happens with imperative sentences? The um, characteristic of imperative sentences is that the subject is not overtly seen. You cannot see the subject. What do you call that in Spanish? Tacito. Sujeto tacito. And what is the subject of imperative sentence, of all imperative sentences? The subject is the second person singular or plural. You. You combine the cracker crumbs. You top with crumb mixture. You microwave, etc. But we never say you go to school, you go to bed. We just omit that. That's the characteristic of imperative sentences. Please do not mix, do not confuse imperative sentences with verb phrases. Verb phrases start with a verb. Imperative sentences also start with a verb, but they are a full idea. That's the difference. Sentences are full ideas. Phrases are incomplete ideas. So how is it that you're going to do three diagrams of imperative sentences? Okay, I'll show you the first one and, this, and the second one, and then you will do it on your own. Is an imperative sentence a sentence? Yes, it is. Does it have a subject? Yes. Does it have a predicate? Yes, it does. All sentences have subjects and predicates. Rule. Now, can we see the subject? In number one, combine the cracker crumbs in a bowl. No, we cannot see it. So, what is the new thing then? This one. Zero. Subject zero. Right? Is it upside? Is it flip? I need to flip the video. You cannot see it. Like this. Okay. Anyway. Subject zero. Because we cannot see it. And this is known as sujeto tacito in Spanish. In English, it's a null subject. Null subject. Or also known as non overt subject. Because we cannot see it, so it's a non-overt subject. Now, the rest of the sentence, combine the cracker crumbs in a bowl, belong to the verb phrase, because it starts with a verb. The verb is combine, is a verb. Combine. What? The noun phrase. What's the noun phrase? The is a determiner. Cracker is an adjective. Na crumbs is a noun. The cracker crumbs in a bowl. In a bowl is a prepositional phrase. In is a preposition, bowl is a noun, and that is it. So, you combine the cracker crumbs in a bowl. Okay? In a bowl. In a bowl. Sorry, noun phrase. Yes? In a bowl. A is a determiner, bowl is a noun. There you go. Okay, the cracker crumbs in a bowl. Now it's finished. Clear? This is example number one. Number two says, top with crumb, crumb mixture. Crumb mixture. Okay, top with crumb mixture. Who is going to do that? You. You top 
with crumb mixture. So it's exactly the same. Sentence has a noun phrase, a subject, and a verb phrase, a predicate. The subject is null. We cannot see it. And then it says top to top is a verb. With crumb mixture is a prepositional phrase. With is a preposition. Cram mixture is a noun phrase. Cram is an adjective and mixture is a noun. You top with cram mixture. Okay, that's imperative sentence. So it's up to you now to do number three, four, and five. Let's see how it goes. Okay. And let me know if you have questions, etc. Please do not hesitate. Write to me. I will gladly answer your questions. See you soon. Goodbye.